everybody. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, my Christmas present that I got myself. Um, so funny story, um, me and my friend, one of my gaming friends, um, were out bowling and, uh, and you know, we're talking about games that we want to get into, like uh, one page rules. We both, uh, we want to start playing one page rules. And then, um, you know, I'm like, oh, did you hear about this, uh, this new 3D printer? It's like, uh, I've been hearing people talk about it over all over YouTube. Um, the, it's a, um, it's a 4K resin printer, but it's like a f small format. Um, and, uh, people say that it prints minis that look just like store, you know, um, game store quality miniatures. And, uh, and, and he's like, oh, like a 4K 3D printer for minis. It's like 300 bucks, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And, uh, and like we're halfway through our bowling game and like a pitcher of beer. And then he's like, oh yeah, I just bought it. You know, like shows me on his phone. <laughs> um, it'll be here in a couple of days. So, um, yeah, he, he, he got his, uh, brought it over to my house because he had never done any 3D printing before. Um, and then, um, well, um, you know, like I, I kind of walked him through like how to use uh, Chidu Box. Chidu Box is the, the slicer that people use to, uh, to do resin printing. It's pretty much like the industry standard. Um, and then a lot of, there's a lot of um, printers like mine that that's the only software that you can use uh, is Chidu Box. And it's a free um, slicer it's basically a slicer is um, where you take a, a 3D file, like an STL file, and then you, um, it uh, slices it. So it, it tells the, the printer what to print and where, um, like how to turn the 3D model into a, uh, an, an actual object. So, um, so yeah, he, he, uh, he brought it over to my house and he wasn't really set up with a, um, like a good, um, PC to do it. He didn't have like a, a desktop or a laptop with a good enough graphics card in it. So we ended up getting him a new computer too. <laughs> and, uh, um, but, uh, but you know, I'm like walking him through Chitterbox and, um, like kind of showing him some of the, the process with uh, resin. And um, so like I, I was an early adopter of like FDM printers, fused deposition modeling printers, like the kind where, you know, it goes around and uh, back and forth and then lays down the, the extruded uh, filament to make the 3D print. And uh, I've had one resin printer before, and um, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. It was, it's a very popular brand of resin printer, but um, the resin smells really, really bad. And it, um, uh, the 3D prints are not quite, they aren't like the quality that you would buy in the store, to put it short. And also the resin is brittle. Uh, so brittle where if you drop it, you know, on the floor, like this, then it'll shatter. But these, this, this, this printer, um, if you didn't know, if you, if you were just looking at this, you would probably think it, that it was just a, uh, a miniature that I bought, but this is 3D printed. And, uh, so yeah, the, the 3D printer that I got is the, um, the uh, Sonic Frozen Mini 4K. And then there's, they make a, a standard, like a 2K version of 4K and then an 8K version. And then the difference between the, the, the 4K and the 8K is like thousands of dollars. This is like a $300 printer. The, um, the 8K is like $2,000. But as you can see, it's a, a smaller 
form, you know, uh, it's, it's made for making minis. Uh, that's like the, the ideal kind of use. Like you wouldn't use it to print anything really big. But, um, so, <laughs> but the, my friend brought his to my house, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, until you get your laptop, um, do you want to just leave it here? And then I'll get it really dialed in and I'll, I'll, you know, get those settings dialed in to where we're getting like clean, crisp, you know, perfect prints every time. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, keep it. And then um, when, uh, when I get my laptop, then we'll, you know, we'll get me set up. And, and uh, so he, you know, uh, I'm, I have it at my house and then I'm putting it through the paces and I'm printing up all kinds of miniatures having no issues and they just keep looking better and better and better as I dial in the settings, you know, more and more. And, um, and then he, you know, one day he shows up to pick it up and I'm like, yeah, I really want one now. So I bought one for myself. Um, and, uh, and then he takes his home and immediately starts having issues. It's like using the settings that I was using to get perfect prints He's getting like mushy prints that have, um, you know, one, one side of the supports that's messed up or like one side of the model looks perfect. The other side looks all mushy or it's just, you know, everything is stuck to the, to the resin, uh, container or like, just like, and we tried everything we tried, like, you know, we updated the firmware or we, uh, tried this different old plate leveling technique and like trying, you know, different resins and I mean, like you name it, just trying everything to where I'm out of ideas and, and I'm getting perfect prints on mine at home. And, uh, and like, and it is my printer. It's not the, I didn't order one and then give him the other one. It's not, you know, it's, it, the, the printer that he, his printer, I was using at my house and I was getting perfect prints of, gave it to him and now it won't work. So, um, and then like even, even to the point where like I'm out of ideas, like I don't know what to do anymore to fix the problem. And he's like, and he's at the point where he's like, I'm just gonna return it and then I'm gonna give you the resin. Uh, you know, because it's like, we're, we're in it for, like, he, he, he got a good gaming PC, like a gaming, uh, desktop. And I kind of helped him, you know, and like spent, spent a good chunk of change on that. And, uh, like, you know, we bought maybe, he bought, he personally bought like $80 worth of resin. And the 3D printer is like $300, it's 300 something dollars, you know, including like he got an extra uh, resin vat and like a bill plate just in case, you know, and uh, like in it for a lot of money. And, uh, and, and we're kind of at the end of our rope because we don't know what we're doing wrong anymore. So I wish that I could say, yeah, we both, you know, we both got one, we both love it. Like it's been an amazing printer and we've just been printing off armies of miniatures. And it's like, I have, I have. <laughs> I'm like well on my way to printing up a whole army and uh, in, you know, like a matter of weeks. And then even like if I, if I had, if I were to 3D print all of the one page rules armies that I want to print, cause there's like four of them that I want to make. Uh, I really like the, uh, like the, um, alien hives and like their, their versions of Necrons, the, um, robot legions and, uh, like their, the Saurians, which are, are like Seraphon and, um, you know, so on and so forth. Like, we, we played it, so the good news is that we love One Page Rules, and it's like hands down better than uh, Age of Sigmar, Age of Sigmar or 40k. <laughs> um, but like we wish that we were both 3D printing armies. 
Um, so, you know, like it might be a little bit long winded of an explanation, but I wish that I could really recommend it and get behind it. But we're just, you know, it's like we're having totally different experiences with it. Uh, so, yeah, um, I, 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 something new that I think I'm going to be doing on the channel is talking about 3D artists uh, because I'm finally there. Like the technology is finally caught up with what I want to do, which is 3D print minis. And it's gaining a ton of traction with me really, really fast because um, 3D printed, the, the resin minis are very quickly becoming my favorite type of uh, mini to work with. Like, in fact, like, I just, I'm totally in love because I, I much, much prefer um, taking supports off of a resin miniature versus um, uh, taking parts off of a sprue and, and gluing them together and then cleaning up seams. Like, it's just, it's, it, to me, it's just a no-brainer. And like, metal miniatures, forget about it. I hate metal miniatures. <laughs> And I, and like, I, uh, I, I used to play 40K. I kind of dropped 40K for infinity, right? But I hate metal miniatures. I despise metal miniatures. It's part of the reason why I don't play infinity anymore is because I hate metal miniatures. And, uh, so this is like the new, this is the new hotness. This is what, this is the new thing that I'm just in love. But um, yeah, I did, um, I, I'm featuring one, um, uh, one artist, one 3D uh, um, digital sculptor, and uh, his name is uh, Papsicles, and uh, I'll put a link to his um, My Mini Factory page down here, and um, if you want to go check him out, and he has some really, really cool files. Um, then, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, put a link there. And, um, I did, um, I did do a little bit of, uh, laser stuff. I, um, I designed a little thing, uh, just, just to make a, a little base that, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I made my own base, but all of the miniatures are his design. And, uh, and then I'm just doing a bunch of robots, uh, a bunch of his robots. So... Anyways, yeah, um, I think it's going to be a thing, a regular thing on the channel is just um, uh, 3D printing miniatures and then showing off different artists. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And um, if, you're, if you're a 3D artist and then you want to show off your miniatures, uh, get in touch with me and then you know, we can work something out. And uh, yeah, I will say this, like, it feels really, really good giving money to um, like somebody, like a 3D artist that, you know, is like passionate about this stuff and then just does it maybe like in their free time or if it is a full-time job for them, then it's something that they are passionate about and something that they enjoy doing versus giving it to a soul-crushing uh, multinational that wants to hamburger in the fans open mouth and then tell them that it's raining you know if you know what i mean so uh so anyways yeah um let's uh let's paint let's three paint some 3d printed robots hey everybody so i uh have a ton of 3D printed minis that I'm trying to base up. Um, I love that these guys come pre-supported and then they don't, you know, you can do the base or like some of them have bases and then some of them just, uh, you know, you just do the, or I mean, they come like this and then you can do your own bases. So I did, um, I cut a whole bunch of, um, little, um, I just had like little scrap pieces of, um, styrene with this diamond plate design on it. 
So I um, cut a bunch of them on the laser. Still have plenty, you know, plenty of like scrap pieces like this left over from other projects. But I did the um, engraving setting on my laser. And, uh, and I got these little, you can see like the little teeny tiny little bolt holes. So that's like a bonus. <laughs> it looks like there's like little bolts in them. Like these kind of look like they're like 3D printed or injection molded or something. So I, I cut them to the right size to kind of go inside some uh, 32 millimeter lip bases or they're also the right size to go on top of um, one inch uh, bases. And like, I love these, but they're not, they're not as practical as these are because they just fit perfectly inside of an inch. So I just, I decided that I'm going to do a bunch of these just because they're, um, you know, and, and this is like a shooty army. These, these robots, you know, they're all, they all have guns. So it doesn't matter like base to base or if they, uh, the size of their base is much. It's not like they're going to be getting into a ton of melee, I don't think. So anyways, I'm just going to, I'm using, um, plastic glue, uh, uh, plastic cement. And then this is styrene. This is just like some, uh, it's like, it's for model railroad. And then this stuff is actually O scale, I think. O scale model railroad. So O scale is very close to um, 32 millimeter scale. Uh, if you didn't know, sometimes you can cannibalize um, model railroad kits. If you see something that's O scale, it's very close to heroic scale. So I'm gonna I'm going around. I'm just gonna glue up these first, like so. And then, um, let me dry. And then I'm gonna take um, take some super glue. Right, like this. Uh, just take a little uh, dot of super glue and put it down on here. And then uh, I take a, I take a toothpick and I put a little dot like that on the end of the toothpick. And then I just kind of dab it on to the connections where I want it because it's a little more per precise than um, squeezing a glob of it onto their feet. Like that. Yeah. Like that's what I did with all these. These are my little robot waitresses. Um, so they have very, very thin connections on their feet and it's very flimsy. Like I need to be careful with these. I, I think I'm thinking about trying a different resin, like an ABS like resin to see if I can get a little bit more bendy, a little bit more flex out of these. So that, cause the, the resin, you know, this type of resin, this clear stuff, this is um, any cubics stuff. It's uh, brittle. And then this is um, this is much more. This stuff is much more flexible. I don't, I don't have anything like a sword or anything like that that I can show you how flexible. But I don't want to break any of these either. But I'm, right now I'm just doing up my uh, my robots. So I think I'm just gonna do all of these guys like this. And then it will be time to prime and paint. So took stuff outside, spray painted it. Um, you know, no issues. This, these, um, 
3D printed miniatures, these resin miniatures are quickly gaining tons and tons of traction with me. Like they're becoming my favorite thing to paint really quickly. So like you can even see, I mean, compared to seam line scraping and like the level of detail with these guys, it's just, this is a total game changer for me. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, like if there is like a little teeniest, tiniest little bit of uh, print lines, it goes away when you spray paint it because it does some gap filling. Um, <clears throat> and then it's the spray paint just sticks perfectly. So that's going to be my primer layer. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of uh, minis that I need to do Xenothal priming on. So I'm going to do that next, but then for like the, the white layer on the robots, I think I'm going to do some chrome instead. I might just do robots just for now. Just paint up a bunch of robots. Got plenty. Okay, so first up, uh, on top of the black, I'm going to do some uh, Foley Hill Model Layer Neutral Gray. This is just going to be my mid-tone. Um, and this stuff is just, it needs to be thinned down just a tiny bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of thinner. Uh, And you might be wondering, okay, if you have the airbrush, then why do you use the spray cans to prime with? Um, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, so basically nine times out of 10, when I'm cleaning my airbrush, um, it's uh, when I get a clog, it's primer. <laughs> um, so, I like how the uh, the spray paint just has really, really good coverage right out of the can. Um, and it sticks to plastic super well. And uh, it's just ready to go. And then I never have to clean any clogs later. So that's why. So I'm just hitting these guys from like seven, uh, 45 degrees kind of and, uh, and then I want to keep their shadows in the bottom, their natural shadows. And then I want the light to, I'm sorry, the, the top to be the lightest part so that it looks like there's a, um, a light source kind of coming down and lighting up the model. Okay, so next up I want to do a, um, like a chrome, um, it's a Vallejo Model Air aluminum. So I need to get anything that's not a robot out of here. <laughs> but the, um, the, that, you know, in between step is the same. These guys, uh, these are, these are humans. So, get any people out of here, alien eggs. Just robots. But um, the, uh, you can see how they still have their shadows under, under them. Uh, it's all the dark spots. And then the only part that I want to be reflecting, you know, like shiny chrome is top down. So this is going to be like my white layer. Okay, so got that done. And then that's just gonna be like to put some color down mostly. Um, 
it's going to be, you know, a layer to work off of. But you can see, like with uh, these ninjas, because they're all hunched over, like they've got a lot of those shadows still on them in places, even though, you know, they're bright and shiny and chrome on top. So that's going to be something to work from later. Uh, you know, it sort of it develops, like it adds that level of realism. So anyways, I'm thinking, so I'm going to let these guys get nice and bone dry. Um, in fact, I'm going to bed. I'm going to work on them tomorrow. Um, but, you know, when you're, when you're airbrushing, when you start touching, if you, if you start brush, using a brush to paint and you start peeling up paint, just stop, just put it down and come back to it later. Just let them dry. <laughs> so, okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. So first up, um, with these, uh, uh robot waitresses, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for kind of like a Robocop look. Um, so you can see how they've got the, they've got the nice highlights. I want to kind of redefine the, um, shadows. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some, uh, contrast paint. I'm going to use Basilicanum Gray. And, uh, this is, it's a very dark gray, but it has a pretty wide range. Like this, this is like the lightest part and then this is like the darkest sort of that's how you can tell with the contrast paints is that the these settle in the bottom <laughs> um and then you know they like to uh like that's kind of the range right there and uh this is this powdery stuff keeps it from being like glossy so if you don't shake these up pretty good they can get pretty glossy um but it doesn't matter because this is metallics. So, um, and then I have one of these because I learned the hard way that I just, I can't use contrast paints like without tipping them over. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put it in um, recessed spots, like in little joints and stuff. And uh, especially I wanna get places that are supposed to be in the shadows, like, uh, on, well, all over her knees over here. And then I'm just going to kind of push it around so that it doesn't pull anywhere that I don't want it to kind of pull it down, like just downwards so that it ends up like where I want the shadows to be. And, uh, I'm, I'm probably actually just going to do this on everybody. But I really like how this color in particular looks over metallics. It just it has a really nice, um, nice finish. So I'm going to get everybody like that. Okay, so uh, you can see like I'm going for a few different looks with these guys, but just using the contrast paints to get down a, um, a layer. Come on, focus right here, right here. Uh, like I've got the waitresses that kind of have the um, more of like a fresh chrome, like Robocop look. I went all over with the ninjas to kind of give them you know, a dark gunmetal color. And then same thing on these guys, like some some places have like the gunmetal finish and then other places are gonna um, have the shiny chrome. So yeah, I mean, it's dumb. Like I, I do use the contrast paints for different things though. But uh, anyways, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna come in now and I wanna give them red eyes. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I'm just going to use uh, contrast paint to get all of their little eyes. Let's see, yeah, uh, Blood Angel's red. And 
and uh, basically I just want to keep some of the, the glossiness or like, you know, the highlights and stuff. Um, oops. Well, now it looks like they're glowing. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna give everybody the, uh, a red eye and it'll probably show up the best on these um, the, like waitresses because they're it's easy to see on them. Right there. All right, so now um, with these, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure where else I want to go with these. I kind of like these just how they are. Um, gonna do something else with the base, but um, <clears throat> with, uh, and I actually just kind of like how the, the ninjas look with just like the black kind of gunmetal finish and red eyes. Um, <clears throat> these guys though, I wanted to do um, I was looking at concept art for, um, Elysium, the Neil Blomkamp movie, the one with, like, Matt Damon. Um, so I think, since I'm just painting out of pots, uh, I'm just gonna keep going, and I'm gonna use, uh, uh, Kador Red to do... I want to do like a, a kind of uh, splotchy, like a uh, sort of weathered paint job look. Let's take that. Um, so I want to sort of have the um, uh, like metal showing through in spots, but what I'm gonna do is kind of like blotch it on. So I'm using the, the side of the brush, you know? And then I'm just gonna sort of do like um, the opposite of edge highlighting, where um, I'm just kind of going around and doing like instead of hitting hitting edges of things, I'm uh, trying to let the uh, the edges be the only part that's really showing through. So it looks like the the metal is just kind of worn. But what I want to do is just kind of uh, use the side of the brush to just kind of uh, you know put it down like that, and then. Um, the, uh, like, this might not even be the best paint to use for this because P3 has really, really good coverage and it might be better to use something that doesn't have as good of coverage. But this is going to be more of a base layer too. So, because I want to do some more weathering stuff later, but I'm just going to go around on these guys and then do, like, all of their, um, Just all over with this stuff where I want that um, red color. And then if, if spots are like black, I can just leave it black. But then anywhere where it's in the highlights, then I want those, um, I want those colors to be like kind of saturated. Okay, definitely has a um, uh, District 9, or not District 9, Elysium kind of vibe. <laughs> uh, so with the robot waitresses, I think I'm just gonna do, I just wanna paint like their, the floor that they're standing on. I'm gonna go with this uh, light blue frostbite color. 
These have some nice contrast, and then I'm gonna paint the rims, the bases uh, black. So, and then I'm just gonna do some weathering, and then call it a call it a day. Um, D3 just really does have really good coverage though. If you want a nice opaque color out of the pot and then it has like, um, you know, self levels pretty well and just nice opaque color, it's a pretty good option. But I do want to cover up this uh, metallic stuff since everything else is metallic colors. Do a couple of coats of that. Okay, so now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I want to use an oil wash on these guys, but not on the figures. I just want to use it on the bases. Uh, so I've got an oil wash, and then this is just one that I made myself. It's just, uh, this is yellow ochre oil paint, but it's thinned down to uh, wash kind of consistency. So I'm going to put that on here. And I mostly just want to get this diamond plate stuff. Like I could put some on their like feet and stuff or like some, you know, some, maybe some places a little bit, but I mostly just want to uh, kind of dirty up the um, <clears throat> tread plate stuff, you know, that they're like walking on. But um, to do, um, and it, you know, it does, it does look, it looks cool, like, uh, to put a little bit in some places where it might collect, because I want these to look more, I want these robots to look like they're more kind of like out in, um, like in the elements. Oh, I missed a spot back here. <clears throat> But um, to do um, to do weathering, one thing that I like to do is I'll take a um, I'll take a colored pencil and I just dip it dip it in some water and then just kind of draw it like where I want to put like dirt and grime kind of stuff. Um, and you can do the same thing like you can push. Um, you can push the, uh, the colored pencil around like the same way that you would push oil paints around. In fact, it, it's as long as it's in colored pencil form and not, um, it hasn't been sealed. You can just get it wet and then it'll, um, uh, you can rehydrate it and then push it around some more. So I'm just gonna put some uh, some wash on these guys, kind of dirty them up a little bit, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what they look like when they're dry. <clears throat> 